chose to join us today. And right before we get started, we are ready to take off in our sanctuary this morning. But listen, if this is your first time with us, we want you to go ahead and take out your phones this morning. We want to stay in touch with you. We recognize that you may not be in our sanctuary, but even if you are here this morning, you have already got your welcome information. If you're live on Facebook, I don't want you to discredit this moment. If you are hosting a, a watch party for us, if you've been invited because there's been a watch party that you've been invited to, we are glad that you are here this morning. And so we want you to take out your phones, if this is your first time, and text the word city, C-I-T-Y, to the number 980 291 Six 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 two, And what that's going to do is give you a connect card. We want you to go ahead and fill that out because we want to stay in touch with you. We are excited that you are here. And while you are doing that this morning, we want to welcome you to the city of God city style. We want to welcome you to the city of God city style. Go ahead and fill out your connect card now. And we want to welcome you to the city of God place where great things happen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's welcome them like we know how. You're in for a treat today. of a move of God today, we want you to know that the city of God strives and exceeds, uh, to, uh, we want to exceed your expectation of church as usual. And if you haven't heard already, the city of God literally means the Lord is there. How many of you know he's here? And so we are asking you now, we are used to being on Facebook with our edited version. This is not an edited version today. You're getting us live and in living color. So we don't want you to judge us. We want you to anticipate a move. This is not the airbrush version. So don't judge. Don't spectate. Get ready to participate and to anticipate a refreshing move of the Spirit of God on this Resurrection Sunday. Father, we bless you. We glorify you. Our souls make her boast in you this morning. We invite you in the midst of us. We're excited about what you're going to do. We're so excited that the stone was rolled away. We're excited that you got up from the grave. And the whole point of our salvation is based on the fact that he rose. Now work your wonder in us today, oh God. Come on. Work your wonder in us today. Move like you want to move. Have your way, oh God. We are excited about what you're going to do. Now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm excited. I, 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 I can face tomorrow. 
glorify you, God. Hallelujah. 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 God, thank you for allowing us to reign. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for him to die on the cross, we wouldn't have the opportunity to reign. God, he loved us forever. He chose this time. Oh, God, we bless your name, Jesus. We say thank you, God. Thank you, God, for choosing, oh, to die on the cross for us. Hallelujah. It should have been me out there. But, God, you decided that you'll do it for me. And we bless your name today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Not a mumbling word, and you will stay there. I won't forget what you gave up for me. With nails in his hand, with nails in his feet, a cry.
Because you're good, good God. You're good. Anybody know that he's a good father? Anybody agree that God is a good father? About a savior that came from glory. How he gave his life at Calvary. He did it all just for me. They nailed him in his hands. Oh my, yeah. They nailed
day we have to give God praise. Every single day we got to thank Him for waking us up early in the morning. Come on, daily I will. I will worship Him. Daily I will. Daily I give Him the glory. Come on, sing daily, I will. for this move we thank you for being in your presence 
we thank you that the stone was rolled away. And this morning, we worship you all the time, but we wanted to give you a worthy celebration for a worthy king. So we lift our hands and we say thank you all over the building. It's personal. Those of you who are live, hallelujah, with us on Facebook, on YouTube, can you just lift your hands in your home and say we love you, Jesus. When we don't have words to say, we say, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we love you and we honor you and we praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we glorify your name, we magnify your name, we honor you today. Thank you for healing and deliverance and making ways out of no ways. Thank you for being a wonderful Savior. We love you. Welcome again to the city of God. The city of God literally means the Lord is here. And whatever you need from the Lord today, whether you're standing in this sanctuary or whether you are live, hallelujah, whether you're enjoying a watch party, whatever it is, one of the things about the city of God, we are called to bring worship, to change atmospheres, to exceed your experience as of church as usual. We bring the presence of God. 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 And in his presence is everything you need. And if I was testifying this morning, I would say because he lives. Oh, because he lives. I can't be nobody but who I am. And because he lives, woo, I can face every tomorrow. Because he got up.
to share our corporate confession this morning. We do have a word that's coming from the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. We believe in decreeing a thing, and it shall be established in the earth. We decree that we will speak and declare who we are. And I know those of you who are at home on Facebook, hallelujah, that you can join us in this confession. Let's go ahead and say it this morning. We are walking into the promises of God. That means that we are we will not be late so that we may be where he wants us, when he wants us, and how he wants us. We will be good stewards of our time and resources so that we may honor God with the gifts that he's given us. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that the city of God is what you've called us to be in this city and around the world. We are a rich ministry, a prosperous ministry, and a ministry that has plenty with standing room only. We are a 100% tithe and offering giving ministry. Therefore, there is no lack in our ministry. Our ministry is prospering financially, and we have everything we need to carry out the Great Commission and to reach this area for Jesus. We are a growing and witnessing body of believers. We meet the needs of the people, spirit, soul, and body. We have the wisdom of God in meeting these needs. We are a people of love, and the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The love of God is living big in us, and Jesus is our Lord. The anointing of favor rests heavily upon our ministry. We are a supernatural ministry, composed of supernatural people, doing supernatural things, for we are laborers together with God. We are the city of God, the just right ministry, to make an extraordinary difference in Jesus' name. Amen. Now all over the building, clap your hands. the building can you give God a mighty shout of praise come on clap your hands come on clap act like the enemy I know he's under your feet but clap your hands and shout to your God with the voice of triumph and while you're praising him can we honor the Lord this morning for an opportunity to give to the work of ministry this morning come on come on I'm excited about bringing to our God a worthy offering this morning it's giving time in the city Amen. You know, when we make our corporate confession, I notice that sometimes people are not sure as they read, but the reality is the city of God is not a church. We are a people. So you are the city of God. So you ought to say, I am a rich ministry, a prosperous ministry, because I'm the city of God. Hallelujah, and we bless God for it. In this, these moments this morning, we want to encourage you to go ahead and take out your phones. We have an opportunity to bless the work of ministry this morning. What shall I render unto the Lord for all of his blessings? The Bible tells us to honor the Lord with your wealth and the best part of everything you produce. How many of you are happy that you are alive today? How many of you know that he is the air that you breathe? Come on, your alarm clock didn't wake you up this morning. Amen. I want you to prepare a worthy gift for a worthy king this morning. We have made giving so easy. Go ahead and take out your phones at home or even in the sanctuary this morning. Amen. Praise God. We can receive your offerings, but we would prefer that you would go ahead and take out your phones. Amen. 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 And let's go ahead and prepare to give. You're going to text C-O-G-M-C, and they're helping us on the screen. It's right there for you. Hallelujah. To the number 73256. Amen. For our members, you know we have our online, on Realm giving app. I see you. Yes, we have it. Amen. We're well aware. Amen. If there is anybody else that must need an offering envelope in this atmosphere, we would prefer that you would go ahead and take out your phones. 
and let's bless the work of ministry, amen, in this season. We are endeavoring to remain healthy, amen. We thank God that our sanctuary has been prepared for you. Praise God, amen. And our purifier systems are going on in this environment, but thank God for the blood, it still works, amen. We just also use wisdom with that. So go ahead and prepare your gifts, amen. It is the beginning of the second quarter here at the City of God, and our members have consecrated an opportunity, those who will, amen, who has given, uh, prepared to give a boost offering, amen, for this quarter, which is either $20 above your giving or $200 extra, dollars, hallelujah, to boost, amen. Just give the Lord a worthy offering. That's for our members, our guests. Give the Lord something that says thank you if you so desire to give here at the City of God. And let me bless you now. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We adore you. All things come from thee, O oh God. We recognize that everything we have belongs to you. And so as we sanctify to you what belongs to you, which is the tithe, we give our offerings to you because we want to render something to you because you're great. We love you and we praise you and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and text this morning. amazing the writer in the book says I esteem the word of God more than my necessary food it is time to receive fresh manna from heaven are you ready come on are you ready for the word of God Jakes would say get ready get ready get ready I'm saying are you ready are you you all this worship we're ready come on let's one more time rest on our feet this morning as the messenger of the Lord comes before us Ooh, I'm so glad that he decided to die. Can we begin to bless God for the gift of this house? Come on, let's praise God for Apostle Gary Bellinger. Point your hands in his direction and ask God to bless him. Give him a right now word. All distractions be gone and be bound. We anticipate it. Now let's celebrate the gift. Come on, let's receive the word of the Lord. Now if you're not in this place, come on, open up your mouth and give him glory. Come on, if you're not in, come on, open up your mouth and give him glory. Take me to A-flat, please. If you love him in this place. I just, you know, I got it. I got to open up with open a little song. Tis so sweet. To trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the says the Lord Jesus, Jesus. How I trust you, how I prove you more and more. We say, Jesus, Jesus, oh, precious Jesus, we cry, oh, for grace to trust. 
you more. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with the heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord, with my hands lifted up. And my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. So I will bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his home. Lean, lean in, for he has done great things. <laughs> Anybody believe it? For he has done great things. He has done great things. Bless you. Name Barbara Steph said there is power, power, power. <laughs> wonder working power. It's in the blood, in the blood. of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious. I dare you to grab on to it for a little while, put your hands on it, and just touch yourself and say, there's power in the blood. Somebody just say it like a minute. Tell somebody, say, there's power in the blood. Maybe I got my 24 career. Tell somebody, there's power in the blood. Listen, I know it's unorthodox for a lot of people today to, to see us in, in, in tennis shoes and, 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 and in street clothes on an Easter Sunday. You know, because folks think it's, it's about the suits and it's about the dresses and it's about all of the nice things. But look at somebody say, all that stuff don't matter if the blood wasn't shed. Tell somebody there's power still in the blood. Tell them it ain't in my clothes, but it's in the blood. Clap your hands to Jesus one more time. Give him praise in this place. While you're clapping your hands, can you clap your hands for Pastor and Teacher Gaither? Amen. Amen. Pastor, Apostle, and Mother Suber, come on, clap your hands for them. Come on, Mother Bellinger, clap your hands for them. All of our mothers, Mother White. It's so good to see Mother Copeland this morning. Tell somebody, there's power in the blood. Y'all, when I saw Mama dance, I wanted to dance myself. <laughs> I know we gotta move, but I tell somebody to open up your mouth and say, God is still in the healing business. He's still in the miracle working business. He's still doesn't see the 
team on this side of glory. Come on, clap your hands for them. And uh, they did a phenomenal job. Can you bless God also for the praise team that's here? And listen, y'all, I gotta lastly do this, but let me tell y'all something. You, you, don't, you don't really know the people that we have in our presence a lot of times. And so sometimes we take it for granted, but we have somebody in our presence who, who, has, who has won awards, who have worked with Israel Halton, who has worked with Martha Manizzi, who has worked with, um, what's the other girl name? Some other, some great people. He flew in from Detroit on, on Saturday to come and help us get all of our stuff prepared. Amen. One of the greatest producers, one of the greatest men that I know. Can you help me celebrate Brother Sean McLean? Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on, y'all. He's a humble guy, and I love his spirit so much. And can y'all give it up for the man, Lord have mercy. I'm just gonna let the cat out the bag. I'm just gonna let the cat out the bag. It's all right. Can I just let the cat out the bag? Listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. We've been talking. We've been talking. I love this boy. I love him so much, too. He, he's like my son for real. And he came to me. He said, Dad, he said, listen. He said, I'm ready to become a part of the city of God. Come on, y'all. Take, take him by the door in the city. Look at somebody say the Lord is doing it and it's marvelous in our eyes. Y'all ain't trusting them. I say say somebody and say the Lord is doing it and it's marvelous. In our eyes. Also, for all of our members that, that drove in from Charleston, thank you so very much for being here. Amen. We are so excited about what the Lord is doing in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles. We're going to get to the word of the Lord so that we can get you out of here so you can enjoy your family. Grace and peace, Facebook and Zoom. We are so grateful that you are with us today. YouTube. Oh, man. We, we own it today. For real. Tell somebody we own it. And tell somebody this is the beginning of a normal. This is the beginning of a normal. Listen, today I'm so excited about the Lord. I want you to stand with your Bibles. We're going to get to the word of the Lord. Amen. And we're going to let you sit down the next time that you stand. You'll be standing because you want to. Amen. So, so if you would, grab your Bibles and turn with me to Hebrews chapter 5. Verse 7 and 8, amen. And I'm reading from the RSV version, amen. So it may be a little different than yours, hallelujah. So good to see all of you on this Resurrection Sunday, amen. Mother Lola, it's so good to see you. God bless you for being here. Mother, it's good to see you, amen. So good to have you here, amen. All God's people, hallelujah. So if you can, let's read together. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplication with, a loud, with loud cries and tears to, who, to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard for his godly fear. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. 
Amen. And then would you go with me over to John chapter 10, verse 18. John chapter 10, verse 18. And it reads as this, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. This change I have received from my Father. Father, we thank you right now for your grace and your mercy and your goodness towards us. Thank you that you've given us another privilege and honor to stand behind the sacred desk to give your name the praise and the glory. Thank you, Father, that we don't take it lightly that we are here to celebrate you on what we call Resurrection Sunday. And so, Father, today I pray, God, that you will cause these words that I will speak to be words from your mouth, that they will enter into the hearts of your people and penetrate their spirit and cause change and deliverance and freedom to show up. I can't hear nobody praying with me. Father, we thank you right now that you will cause every distraction to become under the spirit and the power of Jesus. And we declare now free course of the Holy Ghost in this place. Let your words now resonate in our spirit and cause us to be better. And we will give your name the glory and the honor in Jesus name uh, everybody shout amen if you would by you taking your seats just look at your neighbor say neighbor the subject for today is he had a choice he had a choice tell somebody look at somebody else tell him he had a choice on this side of the cross, we are used to hearing about Jesus' sacrifice for our sins. So we forget this important truth that Jesus had a choice. The choice to redeem mankind or to let mankind pay the price for Adam's choice in the garden. Adam chose death, suffering, and sin over God. As a result, he plunged the entire world into this pattern of life. And we were subjected and are subjected to the destructiveness of unregenerated men. Mankind needed someone to intercede, which is why Jesus volunteered for the role as savior of the world. God is big on giving choices and letting us choose for ourselves what we want. He does not force his will on us in the same way he did not force his will for redeeming mankind on Jesus. He gave him a choice. The plan was Jesus that was from the start. As he submitted to God's will, he became the lamb slain before the foundations of the world. Jesus undertook this role before there was even a world to even redeem. Then at the culmination of history, he was made manifest in the flesh to complete this work once and for all. It was a choice. Somebody shout choice. No one took Jesus' life. He willingly laid it down for us. Jesus tells us, John tells us, excuse me, the reason for my father's love me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it back up again. This command, he says, I receive from my father. The grace of God is more profound when you consider that Jesus could have backed out of this arrangement at any time. I'm going to take my time because I need you to catch this. During this time on earth, Jesus could have said one word. And God would have honored what he said. In the garden when Jesus was betrayed, Peter cut off the ear of the, of the high priest's servant. Jesus responded in this way, put your sword back in its place. Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? He says, but how then will the scriptures be fulfilled? 
Yeah, I'm saying it must happen this way. Tell somebody it had to go down like this. See, Jesus understood that the choice and knew God would honor and respond to his decision at any point and time, which is why he submitted to God and learned obedience. So this type of suffering, Jesus suffering was more than the physical aspect. That, uh, because you got to see this, he was being crucified. His suffering far exceeded this because he had an entire weight of sin on his shoulders. He had the weight of sin. He had the sickness and death that was placed upon him. And he was completely and totally separated from the presence of God. <laughs> Y'all gonna preach with me for a little while. It took an obedience for a holy God. To undergo this type of suffering. This is the point the writer of Hebrews is highlighting in this passage. The Amplified Bible puts it best. He says in the day of his flesh. Offered up definite special petition. For, what, for that which he not only wanted but needed. It wasn't because he wanted it. But it was needed. Can I put a pin right there? Some of you are not going through your struggles because you want it, but you're going through because you need it. It's building a faith inside of you. It's building a strength inside of you. It's building a prayer life inside of you. Some of you ain't never prayed this hard. Some of you ain't never worshiped this hard. Some of you ain't never gave God this much glory until all this hell came on your life. Somebody ought to say, I know that's right, Pastor. It says here, he says, petition and supplication with strong crying this ain't just a little tear that's falling down his face this is strong crying y'all know that strong crying when you can't get your words out because you're crying so hard <laughs> don't no don't y'all don't know what I'm talking about you ain't never cried that hard sometimes you gotta recognize that Jesus was in the garden crying so hard that it was almost impossible for him to get words out And his tears to him who was able to save him out from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Isn't it amazing that in his worst moment, he still spoke the right thing? I'll say it again. Some of you right now, the reason why you are coming out is because you are willing to speak the right thing in a hard moment. You are willing to still say, for God I will live and for God I will die in a rough place. Look at somebody say, neighbor, I declare that in my hard place, I'm still going to speak the right thing. Because of his reverence towards God, his godly fear, his piety, in that he shrank from the horrors of separation from the bright presence of the Father. Although he was a son, he learned active special obedience through what he suffered. The price that Jesus paid was extremely high. He removed from the very, it was removed from the very essence of God. See, we can't, we can't fathom this because we see him so much God that we can't see him human. That this is not the God Jesus. This is the human side of him that's crying and that's feeling left and abandoned by his father. Yet, his obedience would not let him change his assignment. I can't preach. I might want to preach this thing out here. But you got to see how this is the Jesus human. Feeling everything that you feel. 200 times greater. Because you just feeling yours. He's feeling everybody's. Oh, y'all ain't going to preach to me. You know how you feel on your bad day. 
You know how funky you can be on a bad day. You know how nasty you can be on a bad day. Imagine you 300 times worse on the shoulders of Jesus, but yet still he stayed right there. He removed, he refused to give in to the weight of sin, but stay to the strength of power. You ought to look at somebody and say, I got power to stay in this. He was removed. Watch this. He was removed so that we could be righteous. He was moved out the way so that we could become righteous in God's sight. When looking at this account of Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane right before his betrayal, we see how the anticipation of being separated from God affected him. Yet during the entire he repeatedly submitted to God's will in spite of what he was facing. God have mercy. Mark's account is extremely insightful. Mark says here he took Peter, James, John along with him and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. Jesus went through depression. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna talk. Watch this. While going to do his assignment, he had to walk through depression. I'm telling some people, your depression ain't the attack of the enemy. It's God seeing how well you are willing to push through your circumstances to get to your assignment. Depression ain't always demonic. Depression sometimes is a sign that I've got to get to a breakthrough, but it's trying to show me to where I can't get to my assignment. But I'm not going to let my depression stop my assignment. Listen to what it says. He began to be deeply, deeply depressed. Y'all get depressed, want to pull down the shades, pull up the covers, don't want to talk to nobody, don't want to do nothing. Watch this. Watch what Jesus did. Y'all ain't gonna like this one. He found some folk that could cover him in his depression. Y'all ain't gonna preach to me. You gotta learn how to get some folk around you that can help you while you in your depressed moment so that they can pray you through your depressed state. Cause every time you can't pray for yourself. The enemy wants you not to have prayer warriors around your life. He wants you to have folk that's going to cow down to your depression. But you need some folk that can get on their knees and clap their hands and cry Jesus and declare the blood over your life until you get to your assignment. Listen what he says. Y'all got to hear what he says. He says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Watch this. This ain't the cross death. This is premature death. He was so depressed that he was willing to die before it was time to die. Oh, God. Watch this. So what he say? Listen what he says. Because you got to know how to build a barrier for where you are. Listen what Jesus says. He says to them, stay here and keep watch. In other words, I need you to build a fence for me. Because I need you to cover me while I'm going through this moment. I know what my moment is. I 
know what my assignment is. But I need you for a little while to be able to give me strength to go through this assignment. They didn't need to go with him. They just needed to have a perimeter for him so that he could have a face to face with God. Stay here. Watch and pray. I don't need you mumbling. I don't need you to figure out what I'm doing. What I need you to do is watch. Look for the enemy. Look for the attack. And when you see the attack, pray for it. You can't pray for nothing you don't see. Oh, you know, that's your problem. You got folk around you that can't see. They in their feelings. They in their emotions. But you need people that can watch and see what the enemy is trying to do. But not only watch, I need you to know how to pray. Tell somebody, I need you to help pray me through. Because the assignment is great. And the enemy don't want me to make it. But if I got some prayer warriors, if I got some folk that's on the wall, if I got some folk that's watching and praying, I'll make it out all right. Going a little further. Watch this, y'all. You got to see this. I got to pray for you. Come in. Come in, men. Give me three men right here. Give me three men right there. Give me a line right here. Right there. Facing that way. Right there. Facing that way. Right there. Facing that way. Jesus said, watch and pray. I don't need you looking. Because this is the moment that they can't see. <laughs> because they saw him as God. They couldn't handle the human. So he had to get them to watch and pray. But the Bible says when he got a little ways off, he fell. Y'all didn't catch it. Y'all didn't catch it. Y'all didn't catch it. He can't see him fall. Because their trust and hope is in the God that they knew, not the God that they see. They knew him to perform miracles. <laughs> they knew him to form pure water in the wine. They knew him to open blind eyes. They knew him to be able to bring limbs back. They couldn't handle that depressed Holy One. They couldn't handle that. Because now their faith would have been shaken because what they hoped in having a human moment. So you watch and pray while I have my human moment. Everybody can't see your human moment. I can't hear nobody. Everybody can't see you be human. Everybody can't see you cry. Everybody can't see you go through depression. Everybody can't see you mad. Everybody can't see you upset. But you got to have three people that know how to watch just in case. Come on up there, Ashana. Ashana trying to come in because she's trying to get Jesus. He said, oh, no, 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 no. Not right now. Going back. Going back. See, y'all don't like that. Yeah, I mean, but she, but she needs, but she need to get through. No, 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 no. Because sometimes that's a demonic spirit that's trying to distract from the assignment. 
I didn't say she was a demonic spirit. I said it can become a demonic spirit trying to attack from the assignment because now she wants to bring the burden. But Jesus now already got it. She didn't know he already dealing with it. But he has to now go through his own experience. He has to go through his own place where we, where he now has to solidify to the enemy that I'm going to do this. Sit on down. <laughs> Y'all sit on down. I'm almost finished. Listen what he said. Human moment. Somebody say human moment. Ain't it funny how church people want to have a human moment, but they won't let leaders have human moments? I said it again. See, see, I, I said it. Ain't it funny how church for one human moments, but they won't let leaders have human moments? Can I help you understand something? Before you have breakthrough, you got to have human. Y'all didn't catch it. Because God has to see who's in control. Ah, Y'all, it just went over your head. You have to have a human moment to see whether your humanness is more in control than your godliness. Y'all know how it is. You have your human moments. You have those moments where you want to hurt somebody, where you want to scream and holler at somebody, but you know deep down on the inside you can't do it, but because you ain't all the way spiritual, you let your human moment get over. But can I tell you the truth? We all fail sometimes. See, I need real folk right now. I need about 20 real folk to stand with me and say, Pastor, I know you're talking right. See, you, you got to have moments. The problem in the church is that we don't let folk have human moments. Y'all can sit on down. Listen what he says. If you don't believe it, this is Jesus, the anointed one, the Christ, the Messiah, the Lamb of God, right? All of that. King of kings. Lord of lords. All of that. Right? Righteous ruler. Right? My righteousness. My provider. My almighty. My peace. My healer. My, he's there. All of that. And listen to what all of that say. He says, Father, if it be your will, Y'all didn't catch it. This is the righteous one. The king of kings. The lord of lords. The holy one. The great I am. The messiah. The right. The king of lords. The true king of the Jews. He's having a human moment. He says, Father, if it be your will, please take this cup from me. Maybe ain't none of y'all ever had that moment, but I had several of them. Lord, I don't want a pastor no more. I don't want to sing on a praise team no more. I don't want to usher no more. Watch this. I don't even want to come to church no more. All of us had a human moment. If it be your will. Take all this. Take all of it. Let me go. Go get me a pound of weed.
a fifth of Jack. See, y'all, I, I'm, I'm talking to some unsafe folk on Facebook, too. That's with me right now. That probably got a joint in their hand right now. Guess what? It's all right. God still got an assignment for your life. Some of you ain't that deep. You like this. It's my sad, my weekends. Let me take a trip every week. I'm tired of having to report every Sunday and serve folk that don't want to be served. I can't hear nobody in this house. You got to know that your assignment is not attached to the people, but your assignment is attached to God. God have mercy. You got to know that no matter what they do, your assignment is not on them. Your assignment is connected to him. That's why he said, listen what he said. Listen what Jesus said. Because Jesus wasn't all the way crazy. That's why he put one word in there. If it be your In everything I'm doing, I still want to know, is it your will? See, the problem with us is that we don't want his will. We want our want. So I'm not here for my will. I'm here because this is his will. I'm not here because I want to be. But watch this. After a while, when I make his will, my will, I get here because I want to be. Y'all ain't catching. Y'all ain't catching. Some of you are still struggling with the will. That's why you don't have a want to. He says, he says, not my will. He says, but nevertheless. See, you got to have moments where you know how to reel you in. You got to know how and when to rule yourself in. Listen to what he says. I'm going a little bit, but I ain't going too far. So I say, because I need my human moment for a second. And I have those human moments. That I don't want to do this. That I don't want to give it everything I got. But because I love God. <laughs> and because I desire to give him all that he wants out of my life. I made the decision that my will is sometimes cuckoo for Cocoa Pops. And sometimes my will is dependent upon how I feel that day. There are some days that I'm all out for him. And then there's some days that I don't want to do him at all. There are some days that I'm on cloud nine. <laughs> and there are some days I'm struggling just to get on zero. <laughs> because my flesh wants to do what it wants to do. <laughs> but I dare to look at somebody <laughs> and say, neighbor, <laughs> I know <laughs> sometimes it gets hard <laughs> for you to do 
what you do. But I came to tell you, you have a choice. You could choose to do the way you want. And you can choose to do the way God wants. I can imagine at this time. And Jesus was in the garden, the garden that now becomes the separation point from life and death. He comes to the place, to the state line, where now he has to cross over into death or stay in life. And he's now betwixt between two opinions. He's betwixt how his feels in his flesh. And he's betwixt from what his spirit knows he needs to do. I wonder if I got anybody in here that you ever been convicted while you had the glass in your hand, while you had the blunt in your mouth, while you were cussing folk out, and while you were doing everything think uh, that you didn't know what to do. Uh, how many of you ever had a conviction uh, while you was on the dance floor uh, and all of a sudden uh, you felt a dance come in uh, but it wasn't a dance of the world. Uh, it was a dance of God uh, because you were torn uh, between two places. Uh, you had one foot uh, in the world uh, and one foot uh, in God. Uh, this is where Jesus is now. Uh, he got one foot in the world and he got one foot in God but this is the wonderful thing the good thing about it was this right here that he did not have Adam's DNA inside of him so that means that sin now didn't dwell in him. Sin was just upon him. That's why he had the power to choose what he could have. He had the power to choose what God wanted. But he had to go through his human moment. I declare in this house that there's some of you that God is saying it's time to make a choice whom will you serve on this day will you give God your all will you give God everything he wants the Bible says that Jesus after he said nevertheless not my will but your will be done the Bible says that sweat begin to drop Offer him like blood. I come to tell you, he was so much in anguish that the pressure of the time was on him so great. But this is what I like. The Bible says that Jesus, after that time, the angels came to minister to him. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, don't worry where you're at right now because God got angels on assignment for your life. They're waiting on a yes. They're waiting on you to say for God I'll live and for God I'll die. They're waiting on you to say Lord have your way in my life. Look at your neighbor and say neighbor I made a choice to serve God. I made a choice to give him my all. Jesus made a choice to stand right there and take on all my sin. He made, he made a choice. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor. I'm so glad he made a choice. I'm so glad he made a choice to die for me so that I I live Listen, he says this. Jesus went through everything that he had to go through. He had to go through the beatings, 
He had to go through the ridicule. He had to go through the spitting on. He had to go through people denouncing him. He had to go through his own disciples saying, I don't know him. Some of y'all can't handle people saying negative things about you. You can't handle when people say all men of evil against you. I can imagine what Jesus was doing. He was looking at them, taking the whippings, taking the beatings, taking the scars, taking the thrones of thorns on his head, but still all the while kept focus on his assignment because I chose to do this. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know that hell is coming after me. I know that trouble is going to be all around. But I made my choice to stand on God's word. Anybody made a choice to stand, lift up your hands and say, Lord, I choose you. It is now, I'm closing on this, at the sixth hour. Where Jesus has gone through all of his stuff. The Bible declares that at the sixth hour, darkness came over the earth. Y'all ain't catching this. It went back to the beginning. Y'all didn't catch it. Y'all didn't catch it. This is where. He takes it back to the beginning. Because now I'm resetting. I can't get nobody to preach to me today for real. I'm resetting what was messed up. So I'm going back to the beginning. I'm going to start it all the way. In the beginning, darkness was upon the earth. I'm taking you back. So where it messed up? Look at somebody and say, neighbor, what God is doing, he's resetting you. Okay, y'all didn't catch it. Y'all, y'all. Listen, the co pastor has been teaching me about this, this chiropractor. And what he does is he resets your body. I think you said it, or somebody said it, that after every seven years, your body resets. Yeah. Your body goes through a resetting because it's trying to give you another chance. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll say it over here. It goes through a resetting so it can give you another chance. Okay, maybe I'll say it in the middle because ain't nobody catching it. It goes through a resetting so it can give you another chance. Adam messed it up. So Jesus says, I'm giving you a reset. I'm giving you what we say, a do-over. Look at somebody say, he's giving me a do-over. Okay, I got to go. I'm almost done. Watch this. Listen to what he says. Cole gave us this thing. Darkness now was over the whole earth until the ninth hour. Nine represents life coming back in. Y'all ain't seen this. He allowed God to 
is to come in until the ninth hour. Watch this. It day there until the ninth hour and for the sun to stop shining. In other words, I don't need nothing that's going to replace my light. prophetically to somebody I'm removing artificial light you hear what I'm saying because I got to reset you because if I keep anything in here that was in here before the reset you're going to still think you're in where you were and the curtain was rent from top to bottom. I said, you got to help me with this one. Because I said, what is this? He says, this is me dividing light from darkness. Because now I'm causing it, watch this, I'm causing darkness to be exposed to light. Okay, what do you mean, Pastor? Nobody that was not right could go beyond the veil. But that meant you couldn't do the work so you could never get behind the veil. Because the only people that could go there was the high priest. None of us. So light could not be exposed to darkness. So what I'm doing is I'm resetting this thing to no longer it's given to a one person, but it's now given to everybody. Last point. Listen to me, saints. Listen. Then Jesus After all of this, watch this, with the last bit of breath, he yelled with a loud voice, and he says, Father, I commit my spirit. Maybe this won't mean nothing to you. And maybe y'all may say, this is pretty good, but it's, it's the truth. Where does the world sit in the palm of his hand? Where did he commit his spirit? What's in his hand? Come on, make it, make it, make it, make it more. What's in his hand? I'm in his hand. He commit his spirit in his hand. If I'm in his hand and he commit his spirit in his hand, he just commit his spirit into me. Y'all ain't catching it. Y'all ain't catching it. See, y'all missing it because you don't see that God, before you ever accepted him, gave you him. See, y'all muddled that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But when you understand what Jesus just said, Jesus said, listen, he could have said, Father, I commit my spirit back to heaven, Amen. to you. He could have said, Father, I commit my spirit back into the heaven, to the seat. He could have said all that, but he didn't. He said, I'm committed to your hand. Because that's where I'm at. Y'all he chose to give you his spirit. He made the choice to give you his spirit. He 
chose to take himself and to put himself in the palm of God's hand where you You were okay when he wasn't. He chose to make sure that you were free while he was bound. Watch this. He made sure that we didn't have to pay the penalty. Sin is death. Sleep is a believer. Come on, y'all, y'all stay. Y'all ain't catching the revelation. For the wages of sin is death. We don't die. We sleep. But see, we have got so common, we just say death. Death is for sinners. Sleeping in Christ is for the believer. Standing a few, we're all done. He made a choice, watch this, for him to die so you could sleep. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm grateful that he did it. He could have been selfish like so many of us. Let him get it on and on. But he chose. choice to give me his spirit. Today, listen. Today, I recognize and realize probably for the first time in, in my life that it was deeper than what We've always heard that we hear the little, we hear the little messages on Easter Sunday about how how He died on the cross and He hung there to the to the ninth hour and He gave up, but we don't recognize that He really had a choice. And people say, "No, He didn't, because He was God." Yes, He did, because He was human. That's why we are still able to get engrafted into the body because there's still a human in the Godhead. That's why we still have access because there is still a human in the Godhead. So listen today, Facebook, Zoom, if you are listening here in the sanctuary. And you saying, Pastor, you know, I know that Jesus did all this for me, but I just haven't given him everything he wants from me. And you saying, Pastor, today I want to give the Lord my life. Pastor, I'm listening to you on Facebook or Zoom, on YouTube, and you know what? I want to give him my heart today. You can do that, and it's very simple. It's the ABCs of life. You have to admit it. You have to believe and confess it. You have to admit that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe that he is the Savior of your soul and confess your sins to him. 
if you are there, if you are in this place, in this audience today, and you're saying, Pastor, I, I have not given the Lord my heart. Every eye is closed right now. We're not looking at you. But if you, that's you, I want you to lift your hands high and don't be ashamed if you're in this place and you have not given the Lord your life. Hallelujah. If you're on Facebook, Zoom, or if you're on YouTube and you have not, I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say, Lord, today I admit that I am a sinner in need of a Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Therefore, I confess that you become Lord of my life. I lay down my way and I kick up yours. Thank you because your blood was shed for me. And I believe from that that I am saved. Listen, if you prayed that prayer with us today, I believe the Lord Jesus Christ has come to live into your heart. And we want you to put on Facebook, put on Zoom, put on, on, uh, on YouTube, whatever. Let us know that you gave your life to the Lord today. We would love to hear you. We want to, we want to connect with you. We will not leave you out there by yourself because you have a family here that loves you and wants the best for you. And we believe that the Lord is going to bless you extremely. So listen, everybody that now believes, I want you to lift your hands in this place and begin to give him something out of your, out of your mouth. Just for me. Just for me. Just for me.